In this class we'll talk about business expansion. First of all let's consider the reasons for business expansion. There's the possibility of improvement in profit and sales and that is a key motivator in terms of looking for and trying to develop business expansion uh, plans. So business expansion may be orientated towards increased profits or increased sales or it could be in terms of uh, going back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs self-actualization, personal fulfillment uh, it's a desire on the part of the managers to show that they have managed a successful business the business is expanding there is a uh, there's pride in the business because it's it's expanding it's it's a growing business so therefore the management are doing things correctly they the manage the the business is thriving there's also uh the possibility of the elimination of competitors in the market business expansion means that perhaps a bigger share of the market has been taken by the business which means less is available for the competitors and the competitors may be squeezed out. Again it's a reflection of good management of good operational planning and strategic planning which coupled together has steered the business through uh, the commercial ups and downs of the market and has perhaps forced out the competitors. They have outcompeted the competitors. It may grow because there's a gap in the market. Companies are always on the lookout for niche marketing opportunities. Gaps in the market which perhaps have not been filled by the existing set of products and services that the competitors and the company itself may have overlooked some part of the market. Now this company has identified that, that gap and is filling the gap and is thereby expanding. That's a possibility. There's also more security available in diversifying uh, into the development of other products. So developing other products means that the company is offering perhaps a range of products to the market. So it's expanded by increasing its number of products in the market, but thereby reducing risk. Um, if one of the products starts to fail, the other products can take the burden. So diversification means that the business is more stable. The business is capable of surviving and in a better position to, to survive I should say because it has a wide range of products and it appeals right across the market. So there's more security in diversifying and it's able to spread the risk as I said across different product lines so it goes with the previous point more security because it diversifies into the other products the the security means less risk risk the whatever risk there is in the market is now spread over more products so there is less risk uh, confronting the business we've also got something called organic growth. This means growth that's internal to the business. It's financed and it's promoted from within the business. This is called organic growth. So it could be business expansion using existing products. Uh, the method of business, business expansion uh, is it's self-generated. The business grows because it's of its existing products. Its existing products are expanding, becoming more popular in the market and the business expands as a consequence. So increasing sales of the current product, increasing domestic and perhaps export sales and franchising. Different ways in which the business can grow but it's essentially looking at its product or its product range. The product range are bec is becoming more popular in the market. There's more sales so the business expands. That's 
an example of organic growth. Businesses use all sorts of ways in which to encourage this franchising, licensing, exporting. There are different ways in which the business can try to promote organic growth. But um, these are obviously subjects of, of different videos, so we'll talk about these elsewhere. But the point is that the organization has a product range, the product range is becoming more popular for whatever reason, therefore the business grows. It's a relatively low method, a low risk method of uh, business expansion. Uh, the the business grows uh, because it, more output is required, but all the skills that are required to make the, the the product are perhaps in place. It could be the capital is in place, the machines and the organisation and the the design of the business. Everything's in place, perhaps. So therefore, it is low risk. There's nothing experimental about it, or nothing new. It's just simply an expansion expansion of the existing business. Uh, companies grow, as I said earlier, through franchising, for example, McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's have expanded, they, they sell the right to people to produce their product. They market the product nationally, they maintain the standards nationally, they maintain the image of the product nationally or internationally indeed and the the people who have the franchises uh, sell the product in the local markets and then the more outlets that McDonald's approve the more McDonald's receive so it's it's a franchising model it could be that the the business develops a totally new product this is quite high risk it's a high risk method of expansion because uh, products new to the market can have high failure rates. There's a lot of work to be done in introducing a new product. A lot of research in the market is required. A lot of uh, primary research in the market, contacting customers or potential customers, uh, trying to get them to cooperate about the product, perhaps organizing focus groups, getting specialist marketing personnel involved. Uh, buying databases or access to databases, buying um, data generally to try and get a greater understanding of the market, trying to spot the niche, looking at the obstacles of getting involved in the market. There could be legal obstacles or technological obstacles or uh, th developing a new product is expensive and risky. That's the point. Um, most businesses that are successful in this this area have a distinctive unique selling point. There is something unique about the product. The product is hitting a need that was hitherto not addressed. That customers had a need. The customers themselves perhaps didn't properly understand their own need. The customers themselves uh, just carried on life. But when this product came to the market, the customers recognized the product as useful and therefore bought the product, let's say. So the product must have a unique selling point, a USP. There are lots of examples uh, that illustrate this. It could also be uh, business expansion through forming strategic alliances. This is quite a low risk expansion, uh, expansion arrangement where two or more companies work together, uh, perhaps one marketing and the other producing, and they do it for the benefit of both. So two companies come together to launch a new product or to work in a, a new market and they are bringing their expertise to bear on the product, so both of them are collaborating. Sometimes this happens uh, internationally. Uh, with the drive towards globalization, 
companies, let's say in Europe, who wanted to uh, form strategic alliances with companies in Asia, then the company in Europe may have specialist knowledge of a product, about the the technical ways to make the product and what was required and so on. The the company in Asia, their new partner, um, they may have expert knowledge of the market and of the requirements of the market, the legal requirements in the market, the the outlets that would could be used, the the formats for appropriate marketing and so on. So when the two companies come together it's more possible that the that the product can be successfully launched. So forming a strategic alliance. The companies stay separate but have a common goal of increasing profits. The two companies still exist. The example I just mentioned, the one in Europe still exists as an entity and the one in Asia still exists as an entity. They are still two separate companies but they, they have come together for this common goal. Lots of examples uh, to, to illustrate this in the literature and it's worth trying to check to see if you can find some examples yourself. We also have business expansion through mergers and acquisition. A merger occurs when two or more companies voluntarily form into one company. That's when they merge, when the two companies become a single company. They have merged. There may be a loss of identity. Uh, but the two companies are bringing technological know-how, marketing know-how, they're bringing some finance, they're bringing uh, expertise in, the pro in, in this particular product, bringing research and development, they're bringing all sorts to, to bear. The, the two of them are merging and sharing their resources. So the new company should be bigger and stronger and more capable of expanding. An acquisition is often termed as a takeover and involves one firm taking the majority control of the shares in the other firm. So uh, an acquisition or a takeover is when one company buys up the majority of shares in the other company and then takes over the management and running of that other company. After all, if it's a public company, they only need 51% of the shares. Once they've got 51% of the shares, they control the company. It's seen as a, a high risk way of expanding companies as top management can resist the change. The workers may resist the change. The customers may even resist the change because they're losing uh, a company or they're, they, they don't want it, the company to be run by people from overseas or whatever. So it is high risk. It can damage the reputation of the business, can damage the, the whole image of the business. Businesses uh, can become hostile working environments for employees. Uh, this can hinder future product developments. Sometimes when a business is acquired, when, uh, when it's taken over, the, the people taking it over put in their own management. Well, those management may not be accepted by the line management or by the other, uh, by the workers. So it, it can become difficult to manage. There can be issues and uh, stoppages and strikes and absenteeism and some people may leave the business. Some key workers may leave the business because they're unhappy about the new management structure. So it is a risky way to expand the business. Mergers and acquisition is risky. So if we can imagine now how we can expand the business. We have using existing products, as I said earlier, developing new product, strategic alliances and mergers and acquisitions. And the sources of uh, resources, I should say, to, to generate the expansion, well these can be internal, 
uh, retained profits from the past or uh, just sharing capital, logistics, sharing expertise, sharing the marketing, whatever. It could be just internal uh, resources of the business or it could be external resources of the business. Uh, external sources I should say related to the business. It could be uh, trying to uh, finance it from, from banks or uh, from shareholders or from new shareholders I should say or whatever. But it could be external to the business um, and we'll see how, how this works in a second in terms of this diagram. And of course also we have risk. There's always risk involved in expansion. So if we take, let's say, the internal growth of the business, well, using existing products and developing a new product, well, that's done internally. The business can do that itself. Using existing products, it can introduce a new product, if it's got the resources to do so. Or it could develop a new product. The new product could be related to the existing products, but nonetheless, it's new, and it could be developed in-house. The external sources, the ones we've talked about here, in addition to the one I just mentioned, the banks are, are raising raising uh, finance from from financiers who are not currently shareholders but people outside. Those are possible sources of revenue to generate external uh, sources of growth. But the ones we've identified in this particular session is strategic alliances and mergers and acquisitions. Strategic alliances, uh, the the growth in a sense is external. The, the two companies come together, they agree and they produce a new product and between them they try to sell the product and it generates a profit. They're bringing their expertise to bear on the on the new product perhaps one looking at marketing as I said and the other looking at production or whatever and they try to generate um, a revenue stream that's, uh, that generates a profit. Or it could be mergers and acquisitions as I said. A merger where the companies actually lose identity. They become a separate organization. Uh, customers may resent that because they're loyal to a particular company that suddenly uh, vanishes. It's it's merged into a new company and the customers may not relate to the new company. Mergers are uh, reorganizations, mass scale reorganizations where the management are looking for economies and looking for savings, looking for areas that are duplicated and which can be reduced. Or it could be acquisitions, as I said, where one company acquires the other company. It may be done aggressively. It may simply buy up some of the shares of the other company and take over the company. Or it could be done by agreement, where the company being taken over wants to be taken over. But there are issues there. It may upset the staff, as I said. It may upset upset the customers. It may upset... Uh, the, the balance of, of forces in the market. And we have associated risks. Well, the risks are expansion from existing products. Well, that's fairly low risk because it's done internally and it's able to be managed in-house. Development of a new product. Well, that's high risk because the new product may ex be acceptable to the customer or it may not. There's a lot of issues involved in the development of a new product. Strategic alliances where two companies come together to share resources, to share expertise and so on. That's low risk because uh, a lot of the risk is it's been taken away. One company does the production. It looks at its own capital, its own structure and it produces the goods. The other company does the marketing and the design and, and so on. It's low risk. Mergers and acquisitions can be high risk, as I've said earlier. So these are some of the sources of uh, business expansion. This is how business expansion may take place. And we've identified here in this session four different ways in which a business may expand. There are others. It, 
and I've, I've partially alluded to one of them where simply the organization tries to borrow additional funds to expand existing product lines or introduce new product lines and and gets involved with external financiers and so on. But that's the subject of another class and we won't deal with it here. That's all I'm going to look at in this uh, session. I'm going to leave it at that. We have looked at business expansion, sources of business expansion, and specifically looked at these four. But as I said, that's all I'm going to deal with, so thank you for watching.